Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Great having you guys coming back here. I'm loving it. Um, sorry that I've been away for the last couple of days, really focusing on my job. Just want to get all my tasks out of the way, you know, Monday, Tuesday. So today, I can make a bit of time making up maybe a few videos and really about putting it out there so you guys can check them out. So with out of the way, I just want to say a massive shout out to all my subscribers. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for supporting me. Keep leaving comments. Keep liking the video. I'm humbled. I'm truly humble for what I have. I'm blessed. I really believe we have a great passion that's being shared among each other and that's going to continue on. So let's build this channel even bigger. Let's build this channel to a thousand because guys, with all honesty, I need to make some money out of this channel. Now I understand in the long term, I don't expect to have a lot of money coming back to me but what I do expect is to have some a little bit of cash flow to help me building this channel maybe in the two or three or five years long term I'm still gonna be able to make the channel grow and maybe supplement some of my purchases with the money coming back to me so I can keep bringing new pieces new or old of the Seiko iconic watches for you guys to see I feel that that's it's like a great sense of responsibility because for me again it's about story and journey I had someone commenting on my uh, the Alpinist Sarb 017 video today saying that he's going to grab one of the Sarb Alpinist um, when he graduated from his uni. So for me, that's a massive statement. I'm not sure how much influence that I had in order for him to arrive at that um, decision. But for me, every time when that student, a uni student, look at his watch on his wrist in the many years to come, he's going to think about a video that I made. And that's how I look at everything. So guys, I appreciate you. If you are just new to the channel, checking this out, please have a look at all my other vids. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you can find it informative in your watch and cycle journey. And if that's the case, give it a sub to the channel. Give a likes. Leave some comments. I'll be a truly appreciating from the bottom of my heart. Okay, guys. Now, thank you for listening to my ramble along. Let's go into today's videos. I'm going to love it because we have a beautiful, beautiful diver. As you know, guys, this is the Samurai. The model number is SRPH43, Asia exclusive model. But I just did a bit of research uh, for your folks in US and North America. You guys can still buy it, okay? So here's what I want you to do. Tip number one, if you set your heart on a Samurai, and it happens to this one, make sure you're doing regular search on eBay. I've seen an auction. I've seen one of the mint condition, even with... Uh, I think it was even an aftermarket bracelet uh, at auction in the end sold for under 300 I think it was 295 of course was many bidders but you guys if you can get a watch under 300 as a mint condition for this particular coral reef samurai I think that's gonna be the deal of the decades okay at least I believe that price between 300 to 350 or even 400 carries significant value and in my humble opinion, if you stick with the watch game long enough, of course, you're going to find much more informative uh, journey in how to think about this watch in the next about 10 to 15 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes, I don't think you will lose a dime of money if you ever try to sell it, let's say, in a couple years' time. Okay, guys? So we're going to talk about this samurai. We're going to split this video to a couple parts, and we're going to enjoy a lot of it. Okay, guys? This is a beautiful watch and it's really worth mentioning about okay guys I understand I featured this particular samurai in my um, couple of videos in the past but I really think I want to give a full video about this watch given the pieces true justice now first part of uh, my today's take on the samurai is going to be borrowing the spirit and the contents from the seikoguide.com so thank you very much I believe the owner of the website name is Alex I truly appreciate just like many other Seiko fans out there so I hope you'll do okay I'm using your website for a little bit of course uh, your information are very straight to the point I'm not going to waste too much time about it but I appreciate how you sum it up in a very uh, informative as well as a simple way for us to see okay first of all the samurai actually has quite a bit of history now guys if you've been collecting Seiko for a while you understand that iconic Seiko entry-level divers I'm talking about you know that from the Seiko turtles uh, of course we'll talk about SKX that have many many years but turtles you know 67 years but that's you know maybe 10 years of now I think they released what 2015 the SRP turtles right but again the turtle was born the spirit and accounting design of the 6309 trading back 40 50 years ago Samurai doesn't have doesn't pay any direct tribute to any of the old Seiko model that is made 
so if you look at the history of the samurai, it says um, this again according to Seiko's uh, guide.com. In the beginning of 2004, they released the model. Of course, not this particular one. This is a new version of King Samurai uh, Manta Ray. Many, it's it's being followed by many collectors. Many people love it. I love that too. So 2004, almost 20 years ago, uh, Seiko released the first generation of Samurai, being titanium. Excellent, excellent information to know because that just shows Seiko when they had when the designer and the watchmaker decided to make the model, they didn't use stainless steel. They want to try something new. I understand they're being turned in watches made in the, uh, in the in the in the history of many brands, but they decided they want to try something new on a sports watch, and titanium was the model they want to choose because the watch is large, right? It's 40, 42 millimeters, uh, you know, above average size, but they want to try something to lighten up the weight. Of course, we know 20 years ago, Halex Crystal, Screw Down Crown, uh, the proper Divers 200. I just want to give you guys a clean shot. So, automatic titanium scuba divers 200. Okay, so very much a divers 200 proper divers. Now, just going on with their history, that was 20 years ago. So, they released the titanium black, titanium blue, and the titanium uh, summer orange. Uh, I believe those three models were the early release or the initial release back in 2004. I've seen maybe a couple oranges. As we know, orange always a killer dive by Seiko. Okay, I've seen a couple of those titanium sandwich orange, the original SPDA 005 on sale in local uh, Facebook marketplace, local uh, f uh, watch forums, as well as eBay. They trading, I would say, well over 450 or 600. USD close to about thousand Aussie dollars here, so they definitely demanding a lot of premium. I'm not sure how much they cost back in the days, but I would imagine it's between that 250 to 400 retail. So guys, just from that price perspective, uh, if you bought any one of those, of course you know you have a lost value. That's the true beauty of Seiko is when they initiated product. Doesn't matter how long it was. Of course, this is by chance. Not every single watch has followed the same path, but if they decide to build on that line of product and making improvements, hearing feedback, making renovations, making innovations on the product line, um, then that line of products will have its legacy. It will carry the spirits all the way to the many years in the future. So all those watches, they're going to be very iconic uh, in the future eyes of the collector. Now, moving along, there has those very, oh wow, look at that, look at that white, uh, unbelievable watch. Okay, so those are the other uh, the color variants, of course, you can see a clear line of differences that those few models are titanium and these are stainless steel. So they had a change of mind. They, of course, they want to develop the brand further. Uh, so they have stainless steel. Okay, so you look at Ninja. This is more, you know, uh, in the uh, 2000s. They're probably back in the 2004 as well, or five. You can understand those few watches probably had a lifespan of two to three years. We had many special editions. Again, this is well, well, I mean, 20 years ago, okay? I mean, I was nowhere near collection watches. <laughs> I was, you know, probably, you know, eight, nine years old back in there, right? But then they stopped, okay? So if you understand the timeline here, they started 2004 for the Samurai. They had a great production success with three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about 10 watches, 11. And then they stopped. So this was last one, the JRE49, this beautiful limited edition, was made sort of close to 2010. And then they stopped for seven years. And they stopped for seven years. You can imagine, dear guys, right? Seven years of non-mentioning of the design. That pretty much put a coffin on his table saying, guys, we're done with it. We're not going to make it no more. Just like many of the legendary Seikos. Of course, they changed their minds. So uh, 2017, of course, in that seven years, the watch industry changed. A whole lot of things different changed, right? They decided, the guys, let's bring the samurai back to the table. Let's make it live again. All right. So beautiful. They made a second generation of this, this um, samurai that looked tremendously different. Of course, we'll talk about differences just in a bit. But uh, second generation of this uh, samurai blue, blue lagoon. Actually, guys, I had this watch and I sold it. But again, you know, you haven't sold the watch. I probably didn't have enough money to buy more. Okay. So I had that beautiful blue lagoon. I think one of the best samurai that was ever made. And you guys see the rest was huge, right? This becomes our familiar watches. We know this, right? So the Samurai Black, 
we have the Pepsi. This is a two. This is a look at right two tone samurai. I think very collectible. I had this as well. I had the orange samurai. Uh, was actually my first prospects again. That was the watch that I had, and I used that watch that I traded. I uh, traded for these guys. Okay, so that was a great trade. Of course, I do miss the orange. If one day I have an opportunity to buy it back, I think I will. Okay, we have the patty. Um, then we have Zing B Samurai, of course, very collectible. We have the Save the Ocean series that comes up. Wow, this gray Samurai look definitely is the looker. Okay, so we have all those kind of Samurais that comes after it. We have the Hulk, and then guys, you see, in the last couple of years, they go hear feedback that everybody wants Sapphire Crystal, everybody wants <laughs> Ceramic Bezel. So this couple King lines, the development started with the Turtle and the Samurai, and this is the King Samurai. So really, between the King Samurai and the second generation of Samurai, there's no differences in, in design uh, as a dimension or shape of the handset indices. The main thing, just the upgrades in the material and slash on that piece of Cyclops so King Samurai so my Samurai actually it's not even here so my Samurai fits in the King uh, line of watches in the Samurai so guys you understand there's only there's only a couple of generation of Samurai series right even the watch was made originally in 2004 there's only in two generations I mean even Sumo you're looking at now Sumo is actually younger than the line of Samurai which hopefully one that I'll bring a sumo to this channel because I love to collect iconic Seiko. I want to have the, the whole lineup. Okay, so there's a bit of history with Samurai. Don't treat this watch any lightly. There's been a lot of work, there's been a lot of thoughts that went to. So thank you very much again for the Seiko Diet.com. I'll move this away and let's focus on the watch. Now, before I decided to move away, actually, guys, I just want to have some direct comparison. Guys, you know, right? I want to. Make this as formative as we can. So I'm gonna put this the first generation here, and this is my watch here. Okay, so I guess straight away you guys can see is barring the very similar. I, I never had the first watch generation, so I think that's 42 millimeter. Just let me actually test this out. So the first gen is 42, the second gen is 44 and a half, so almost five percent larger. So the first gen is a smaller watch on the uh, dimension perspective. When it comes to overall shape, very similar, very similar shape as far as my concern from the photos. Um, extremely, you know what? The watch is giving me a. This, if I look at this, uh, and I have no idea about the history of Seiko or Samurai Iconic Divers, I would say this is the future generation of this, simply because it gives you the very similar uh, vibe of it. Of course, we understand from a handset perspective, just let me focus on, from a handset perspective, we change from what I do know is from the, even this is actually a contribute to uh, the reason why the community name is the Samurai, because of the swore shape of handset uh, from the second generation it decided to borrow the spirits of a monster which we can see now so there was a change in the handset the second out the minute they all changed there was a change in the indices where the indices has a bit of standing still markers there just to reflect the light and now the generation carries everything uh, loom uh, just from the industry perspective the inner bezel here right there we have an inner bezel not in the bezel the the hourly market the mini market here this one carries the same but what I think the Seiko had made a difference is, is that guys just again I'm just talking about comparison for now right comparison for now against the first gen is guys you can see we have that beautiful orange inner chapter ring I think for this watch that is that design itself knock it out of the park because it carries the beautiful layer of uh, in uh, uh, indices uh, called that in their chapter ring and with that beautiful minute uh, actually we'll call that seconds seconds marker of oranges that just contribute to the overall design significant significantly beautifully with that orange second hand and that burnt orange bezel color now the other thing I need to talk about again based on what I see here is I love how they put additional inner ring of standing still sort of inner bezel you guys can see what I'm talking about right this is not bezel like a ring of standing still material there it just reflects like in a much more dynamic way it gives the watch so much layer of looks from the different angles and I think from a design perspective I understand we're paying tribute to the old but if you ask me which one that I prefer, I don't think I say this a lot, right? Because for most of iconic divers, at least in my eyes, 
it's very often to see that I like the old generation of products than new, which typically falls under the last sort of four or five years of of uh, product development and design changes. But for the samurai, I prefer the new gen. Again, knowing that's paying tribute to the old one, but I definitely prefer the new gen based on those couple of design cues that I that I just mentioned. So this is a beautiful watch. So guys, thank you for being with me so far. We talked about the history of the Samurai, which I hope the, the video has been very informative to you. The second part uh, of my analysis and my personal take of my uh, relationship with this watch, I like to just go through the simple dimension of it. As we've seen already, this watch had a, um, a diameter of, of your dial, about 40, 40, let me just go to it again actually. Just let me get it wiped it clean to make sure I present it to you as nicely as I can, guys. Okay, beautiful. You're clean to go. We have 2 o'clock to 8 o'clock diameter of... Guys, I'm looking at this, right? About a 44, so 44 and a half. I think that's about right. So very similar to total, 44 to 44 and a half. And lock to lock width of, so 48 and a half on a 50. Okay, again, that beauty of the short lock to lock is still represents very fairly and well in this in this watch. Now, I want to show you guys something, okay? So, as you guys can see, again, I'm not comparing this watch, but what this watch will give you it's intrinsically a different feeling is because the bezel to bezel, very iconic Seiko diaries as we know, okay? So, the dial size is only 32.9 okay so they're about 32.9 you can call it 33 so the dial diameter between 9 to 3 is 33 millimeters of course following that cushion case of iconic design of the 6309 and legendary Seiko's but if you look at the dial size of here so that's 32.9 but the dial size of the Samurai is 34 sorry guys let me just get it close and make sure I get it right is 30 actually it's about 32.9 as well there you go. Okay, so if you include that chapter ring, guys, it's about 34. But if you exclude it, it's about 33 as well. So very similar. But somehow, the dial just looks a lot larger. The dial just looks a lot larger. Maybe it's because this one doesn't have a cushion case, of course. We have a very aggressive, we have a, a very aggressive similar traditional lugs that protrudes out. But the dial face just looks a lot larger, lot, even more legible than the Seiko. That's why... I guess in the old sort of you know Seiko iconic design, this one Samurai just stands out because this one, even though it doesn't have the um, cushion case, but it has a very very comfortable wearing experience, right? Which I show in a minute uh, when I put on my wrist. So lock to lock is 42, 40, uh, 44.5. Lock to lock, uh, sorry, diameter is 44. Lock to lock is about 48, and dial is about 43. So very strong representation of that iconic. Uh, coral reef bezel. The thickness of the watch is sorry, I'll go straight at 30, 13 point half, very similar to SKS and turtle. So between that 13 and 13 and a half, okay. Well less under the 14 for sure. The size of the crown is seven. Okay, six, six which I think is a perfect choice for the size of the crown. Lock the lug with, of course, is the twenty-two. Uh, just in terms of the bracelet again, like guys, I just want to mention you guys probably seen this uh, bracelet. I've made another video about all the bracelets that I have, but this is the razor wire bracelet from Uncle Seiko. is uh, just simply a perfect match in heaven. Uh, I'm gonna put on my wrist, of course, we'll talk about the mention of the watch, and then I'm gonna put on my wrist just to show you guys how it looks on my seven inch wrist. I think it is a beautiful watch, it's probably one of my most significant in terms of its beauty, its elegancy, its uniqueness. I pick this up all the time when I'm wearing a shirt. And I think it's a, a simply a crowd pleaser. I understand this is not traditional black or traditional blue or any sort of traditional two-tone thing. But this burnt orange, this core riffs borrow spirits of Samurai, it just, I can't let this go, guys. I understand I can't keep all the watches, but again, my commitment is I'm going to keep one Samurai and for now, I'm not trading this for any other color or specs variation. I'm loving this. I'm not letting this go. This watch represents a lot of value to me. A lot of inspiration, and I just loving it. I'm wrist, especially with this super comfortable Uncle Seiko razor wire bracelet. It's a perfect match and comfortable made in heaven.
I'm absolutely loving it. Okay, guys. Now, the second um, part of the video, as, as, as you guys seeing, I uh, talk about dimension of the watch. Uh, now, the movement, the movement, as we know, a legendary, reliable, is as bad as you call it, or is as good as you call it. I have many forearm movements. The worst forearm movements. Okay, first of all, in general, I think the forearm movements is definitely superior than the 7S. Of course, the building on the foundation of the legendary 7S doesn't mean it's a bad movement. You serve a lot of people, serve with their career and life, day to day life. But the forearm movements, the the worst forearm that I have, maybe 25 seconds a day faster or slower. The best forearm movements that I have is the yellow thing baby tuna. Right on, right on the time. Literally doesn't lose or gain a time. Every time when I put it on this bottom, I don't know what's going on with that forearm, but this forearm. About eight to twelve seconds, I think around that ten seconds a mark. You know, when it comes to this affordable, bring so much value and appreciate the design of it. I don't really, really care about time accuracy at all. In the beginning, I did care a lot. Every time I watch game ten seconds faster, I make sure it aligns right back to it. But for now, ten seconds is sweet. It's very sweet. Okay. So the movement is fantastic. The dimension is very wearable, extremely comfortable on wrist. If you pair it up with this Uncle Seiko bracelet, this original watch came with the rubber uh, blue strap with the gold tone uh, matching on the buckle, very similar to the color of the crown. But um, once this watch is on this bracelet, it's never coming off, guys. I'm telling you, this watch is never coming off this bracelet until the day ends. Um, now I'm gonna move to my third part of, of course, the second part. I'm pretty much finished right we'll talk about that beautiful uniqueness of that second of that second hand that burned orange uh, a, a, a look at that I just my eyes just get drawing to it and guys you know what a couple of things that I noticed right I truly appreciate if you guys look at it any iconic Seikos with their uh, second hands use a different color of course this one is matching the burned orange and the yellow they traditionally they always make that second hand uh, two color tone. What I mean by that is this end of the second hand they normally use a stainless steel or they coat it with a black but for this one they color the whole second hand. You know what? I appreciate that because even though it gives me less colors on the dial but I appreciate that transparency and consistency. It's perfect. Um, so the color of that second hand matching up. I'm sorry guys I'll just get this um, second uh, minute hand out of the way. Of course, we know this for our movements. Uh, put our crown twice, you get in a minute. And then, of course, we're looking at screw back in. The color of the second hand match up perfectly with a Divers 200 orange. It's a different tone of orange, but I love it. So. Divers 200 is orange, the second hand is orange, the mini marker is orange, and then you have the bezel orange. So you have four places that all had consistency with orange, all slightly different. So they play light, they play differently, slightly, in a different sh uh, shading of the light. It's just magnificent. I'm loving this design. The more I look at it, the more I draw into it. Okay, now, um, what else do there to cover the bezel is uh, 120. Uh, wow, very smooth, guys. I love the generation of King Samurai. When they um, improve the uh, bezel to ceramic, they definitely improve the overall feeling of the um, of the bezel movement. All the markers on the bezel is engraved with excellent excellent machinery. Matte looking, but reflects like. Uh, reflects light beautifully guys I'm not sure I just want to give you guys some light shot there you go guys beautifully uh, of course the crystal is sapphire crystal with anti reflective coating which I think works perfectly on this watch sorry about that day change guys right in the middle I'm not gonna change it again with the single Cyclops on right on the top of the of the date which I think is a fantastic touch right so because this movement is 435 is not 436 so I love that that's how the original summarizes as well right single complication of the day plays elegantly and beautiful with the watch the side profile is beautiful as well guys very muscular I'm absolutely loving the design of this watch you have the whole bezel sitting on top of the case. Very clear 
um, delineation of the brushing on the sides. You have all brushed, all brushed here. Of course, you have that beautiful nerding on the bezel. Just want to give you guys some close-up shot. Excellent design. If you look at the other side of the crown, if one signature design of the crown is the knurling on the crown. Guys, I just want to put this close up. There you go. You have a perfect view. You can see, guys, the knurling on the crown is, of course, not the same in size, but I think identical in design of that knurling on the, on the bezel. So when you look from a side perspective, it just gives you a great sense of joy. This watch was designed with care, with heart, with clear intention. I think they've done a job fantastically. Okay, guys. Now, that wraps up my second part of my take on this beautiful watch. The third part of the watch is, of course, as we know, any watch doesn't exist in your collection alone. Every time when you go to your collection, uh, you have a story. You have different moods. You want to pick different things up. You want to pick different pieces to have a different sense of joy. And for me, it's very important to understand where this samurai really sits in terms of your iconic Seiko design, Divers 200, or uh, in, in its history. Now, so I'm just going to put them together, of course, between the iconic design of SKX and Samurai first. So guys, if you can wear an SKX, knowing the Samurai is a bit larger, but don't be afraid of it, because they wear small, similar to the SKX, but of course, they're still slightly large, they don't wear the same. Uh, it's a very beautiful watch. That's next to XKX, and now I'm putting um, the Samurai next to our, of course, fan favorite turtle. Everybody's got the turtle, right? So turtle, there you go. It wears, it wears um, about the same size as turtle, if not a slightly larger, I would say. But when you have it on the wrist, because that design of it, it, it the curvature on the end of it. Again, I'm just putting it on again in terms of on the side view between. So very flat on the wrist. It covers large areas on your wrist. Uh, area on your wrist. It is a very beautiful, guys. I don't even feel the watches on the wrist actually. Um, at the same time, just want to give you guys a bit of wrist comparison of that and the turtle. There you go. That's the turtle on my wrist. So you can see because of that strong design of curvatures of the turtle shell, this this watch stands. You know, visually, it stands taller, a bit taller than a samurai. Samurai is more flatter, and because how that sort of foundation of um, of the samurai case design, it just sits flatter. But again, it feels. I don't even feel this watch on the wrist, guys. Okay, guys. So if you guys worry that the samurai will be too big for you, and you, if you can put off the SKX, no, you look how the flat that is. It's absolutely beautiful. Don't be afraid to pick up a samurai. At least give it a try in the local boutique or retailer. You won't be disappointed at all. Okay, guys. So putting three watches together, as we know, the legendary SKX. Um, and then, of course, we have a turtle here. Okay, guys. Those watches can exist in your collection altogether. They won't interrupt with each other. Each of them carries a lot. They are completely different watches, guys. Okay. Each of them carries uniqueness and beautiful in designs that... Oh, I watch lovers, um, you know, appreciate. And this is the strategy I've been collecting Seiko, guys. You see, when I'm, this is where I am. I'm not saying I'm mature enough to saying there's no changes in my collection. But when I choose, see, I have many turtles. This is the only SKX that I ever had it. I had three Samurais, okay? But now, I only have each per line, per one of them. And I appreciate myself, even now, I'm thinking for myself. That I made the right decision in terms of color choice of the variant. Very traditional iconic design to its history. That color that stands out Pepsi, the blue, the iconic design, and legendary SKX, not mentioning you know, featuring many of the war heroes or backing, you know, on the movies we talked about in the SKS in teams, this is uh, 009 Pepsi. And we enhance the color, the whole thing to a whole different color with this modernized king version of the samurai. So guys, hopefully my video has been informative to you in a few dimensions of the samurai, inclusive of its design, history, and of course the iconic 
colors that I think each of them is going to have its place in the history. I'm not selling them. I don't feel when I look at them, I feel satisfied. Uh, it's almost like I look at them, I say, job well done on the Seiko Turtle Samurai SKX. You guys not leaving my collection. And I hope this video has made things more clearer in terms of logic, in terms of story, in terms of if you ever thinking about pick them up a while back, you were afraid because of size, because of color, because you were afraid that too it's similar sitting with the other uh, iconic Seiko divers in collection. Hopefully you found this video helpful and appreciate for you, every one of you, if you're sticking for this long. I thank you from the bottom of my heart again, okay? So with that out of the way, I uh, appreciate being here. I'm hoping you have a fantastic time no matter where you are. And I have no doubt I'll see you next time in my video. Okay, guys, uh, best of luck. Bye-bye for now.